Hey everyone, in this anatomy and physiology lesson, I'm going to cover the bones of the hand and wrist, which make up part of your appendicular skeleton. These bones consist mostly of long bones, except for the eight bones of the wrist, called carpals, which anatomists classify as short bones. The bones of the hand and wrist can be broken down into 14 phalanges, 5 metacarpals, and 8 carpals. When you combine both hands and wrists, you get a total of 54 bones out of the 206 bones in the average adult skeleton. Let's start with the fingers, which are also called digits. Each digit has a name that you probably already know. You have a thumb, also called a pollux, an index finger, a middle finger, a ring finger, and a little finger, also called the pinky. These digits, along with the metacarpals, are also numbered 1 through 5. And here's an easy way to remember the number of the digits. Whenever you give someone a thumbs up, you're holding up one digit, which also happens to be digit number one. Then you have digit number two, three, four, and five, ending with the little finger. Each finger is made up of three long bones called phalanges, except for the thumb, which has only two phalanges. Your toe bones are also called phalanges, by the way. Now the phalanges are named after directional terms, and if you think back to my video on the directional terms, you'll remember that distal means further away from the attachment point or origin of a structure, and proximal means it's closer to the attachment point or origin of a structure. And using your arm as an example, I gave you a little trick to remember that. I said if you make a pistol with your hand, you can remember this phrase, the pistol is distal to the upper arm. So the phalanx furthest away from the metacarpals is called distal, the one closest to the metacarpal is called proximal, and the one in the middle is called middle or intermediate. And again, you'll notice that the thumb here has only the distal and proximal phalanges. It has no middle bone. And many people don't realize it, but if you grab the thumb in the middle and wiggle the tip a little bit, you can actually detach it from the hand like this. Just kidding, I totally made that up. Now the metacarpus or palm contains the long bones called metacarpals. You have five of them. And let the name help you. The prefix meta means beyond, and the word carpal comes from Greek and Latin words that mean wrist. So the metacarpals are the bones just beyond the wrist. And these metacarpal bones do not have individual names, but rather they are numbered one through five, with one being the metacarpal proximal to the thumb, and five being the metacarpal proximal to the little finger. And again, remember that little trick I taught you. When you give someone a thumbs up, it's one digit, and it's also digit and metacarpal number one. Each metacarpal has a base, which articulates with the carpals, a shaft, also called a body, and then a head, which articulates with the phalanges and the phalanges also have a head, shaft, and base. By the way, many people will confuse the carpals and the metacarpals of the hand with the tarsals and metatarsals of the foot. And here's an easy way to keep those straight. You use your carpals to steer a car and your tarsals are near your toes. Now the carpus or wrist area contains eight short wrist bones called carpals. And again, these are named after Latin and Greek words meaning wrist. And these bones have bizarre names, but that's because they are named after ancient root words related to their general shape. For example, trapezium comes from a word that means little table. Scaphoid means boat-shaped. Lunate means moon, think lunar. Triquetral means three-cornered or triangle. Pisiform means P-shaped. Hamate means hook. Capitate means head, and in my opinion, this is one of the easiest bones to recognize on the hand because it's one of the biggest, and it's kind of right in the middle in the distal row of the wrist bones. And if you think decapitated, that means losing your head, so it's called capitate. And then you have the trapezoid, which means table or four-sided. And the easiest way to remember the location of the carpals is to use a mnemonic. And if you look at the right hand from the anterior position with the palm facing you, You'll notice that the metacarpal of the thumb articulates with that trapezium bone. And thumb and trapezium both start with a T and they both contain the letter M. And so that's where your mnemonic's going to start. And you're going to go in a clockwise direction and you're going to end with a trapezoid bone. So you begin with trapezium, end with trapezoid, and here's the mnemonic. To save lives, the physician helps create treatments. And again, the key with this mnemonic is just always make sure which hand you're looking at because if you were looking at the anterior view of the left hand, you would actually be going in the opposite direction. You would be going in a counterclockwise, but with the right hand, you'll be using this mnemonic in a clockwise direction. So just keep that in mind. 
Okay, so that wraps up this anatomy lesson over the bones of the hand and wrist. I have a free quiz that you can take in the description below on our website to help test you on this knowledge. And we have a whole playlist of anatomy videos if you want to check those out. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe.